Hi, Sagittarius and Sagittarius Rising. Here's your horoscope for June 2024. I'm astrologer Joseph Anthony. All right, we have a big month ahead. And this involves a lot of other people because Jupiter now is in Gemini. This is your ruler, Jupiter. And last month it entered the sign of Gemini. And this is the seventh house, which represents other people. And as you can see here, the sun and Venus are in the seventh house and now being joined by Jupiter. And so this is going to be at least the first half of the month, a very social month for many of you and partnerships, relationships, getting invited to parties, events, conversation. This should all be going up quite a bit because of this. Now, Jupiter is going to stay in this house um, for the next year. So from May um, of 2024 to May of 2025, actually, it's June of 2025. It'll stay in the seventh house. So. Lots of socializing, lots of partnership potential, lots of thinking, lots of conversation. This month is going to be huge for conversation. Gemini is your opposite sign, and it loves to talk just as much as you do. So this is going to be a very important time to converse, to express yourself, to write, to share uh, with others. So I'd say take advantage of it. Also, as the month progresses, we have uh, Mercury also entering Gemini, and we have a new moon in Gemini in the seventh house. So there's a lot of activity in this seventh house. Mars will also be making a, a switch in signs. It'll be going into Taurus in your sixth house of daily work and service and health. And so they'll be focusing on that as well. So it's a very active month, no doubt about it. So let's dive in. So we have Jupiter in Gemini trining Pluto on the 2nd. So the first week of June is already pretty popular, pretty pretty busy in a sense. So here's Jupiter at one degree of Gemini, and it makes a trine, which is 120 degrees away, to Pluto in Aquarius retrograde. So it's in the third house of communication. Once again, suggesting something to do with communication that's going to be on the table here with a partner. Maybe you're asking a partner to move in. Maybe you're having important discussions about, you know, matters of life and death. You know, maybe there's a family member not doing well. Uh, maybe there is um, a resolution that needs to be had with an, ag an agreement or a contract. Or maybe there's some legal issues that need to be resolved and they finally are. It could be anything, you know, this is an easygoing alignment. So it could be a good push and pull sort of, okay, we'll figure this out. Let's make this happen. It'll all work out. There tends to be a little bit more optimism when Jupiter is making a favorable alignment to Pluto. But it is a transformation of some kind, okay? So it depends on your actual birth chart. Remember, this is a general sun sign reading for anyone who has a sun in Sagittarius or a rising sign in Sagittarius. It's a Western astrology tropical reading, sun sign. So it's very general, very basic because I don't have everybody's birthday and everyone's birth chart and birthdays are different. So it's very hard to pinpoint exactly what's going to happen in your life, okay? it's You have to know your own birth chart. So this is uh, going to be, again, involving a lot of other people this month. So Mercury enters Gemini on the 3rd. So you can see here the first three days right off the bat, the energy goes up, the need to converse. Mercury in Gemini loves to talk, loves to think, loves to process information. At this point, you may find yourself overloaded with information. You know, maybe you're giving a speech to someone. Maybe you're doing a presentation. Uh, maybe you're going to an event or a party or a gathering. And so there seems to be a lot of activity with other people. Uh, maybe you're joining a club or a membership of some kind and there are other people around. This is the kind of energy that I'm seeing here uh, with Mercury in Gemini. You're not going to be able to keep quiet. The mind will be on overload. So this is going to be very important. But there's more. The new moon in Gemini on the 6th continues to build up in this 7th house. Now this has the opportunity to meet somebody new or a new partnership in business or, you know, in the next two weeks, something with another person or several people can be uh, very important here because the new moon is going to be at 16 degrees of Gemini. So wherever that is in your actual birth chart, you know, that's going to be uh, beneficial to you. And so th that is something you need to pay attention to. But it will be squaring Saturn here in the fourth house. So something to do with uh, family life, the home life, real estate matters, uh, you know, siblings, father, mother, 
it could have something to do with that. So there could be some important discussions or, or arrangements that need to be made. Uh, maybe there's a big party or an event or a birthday or a celebration of some kind, and you're kind of overwhelmed with what's going on in these next couple of uh, days and, and at least the next two weeks because of the new moon in Gemini. So, But it is an opportunity to meet new people. So get out there and mingle. Uh, Mars enters Taurus on the 9th, and there's Mars right there. So it's been in Aries for quite a while. And now that it goes into Taurus, the energy slows down a little bit more. But it's in your 6th house. Now, the 6th house has a lot to do with service and health and your daily responsibilities and taking care of others. So with Mars going through here, you feel like a workhorse. You just want to keep going. You just want to do. Uh, but you do it in a slower pace. You take your time. You, you know, you ease into it. And uh, paying attention to your health is absolutely necess a necessity with Mars in Taurus because there's a tendency to overeat. When Mars is in Taurus, we tend to indulge a little bit more. So we, you know, we go for the sweets or we go for the wine or the, uh, you know, the alcohol, the beverages, the food, because it's comforting to Taurus energy. So Mars in Taurus is suggesting that you need to pay attention to your health. Now, if it doesn't pertain to any of that, it could have something to do with a pet or an animal that you love very much or you know taking care of somebody else uh, that you care about maybe it's their health that is in in, uh, in need of uh, you know taking care of but whatever it is it's going to stay here for about five or six weeks in the sixth house until it moves into gemini so this is going to be a main focus but however mars will be getting entangled with pluto and that's the next alignment here on the 11th i would say till the 13th or 14th mars will exactly square pluto and so here we see um, from the moment it enters on the 9th all the way to about the 13th or so, uh, this energy is very strong and it could cause some uncomfortable conversations. It could cause a little inner ter turmoil, some friction within yourself or another because this is the third house of communication. This is your daily routine. And so something is changing here. Something is um, affecting you. It could be mentally or physically, or if it's not you, it's somebody else in your life. And so there's a lot of emotion or feeling involved because remember you have all these planets and other people. So this is why I say it could be other people as well that you're having these conversations with. So whatever it is, uh, keep an eye on this one. This is a little uh, tricky, okay? Now on the 17th, Mercury and Venus both enter Cancer right here in the eighth house. So this has a lot to do with um, death and rebirth, transformation, sexuality, other people's money, finances, and investments. Now with Venus here, it has to do, it has to do with real estate. It has to do with inheritance and, you know, things pertaining to family dynamics and family matters. And so uh, maybe there's a loved one that's not doing too well. Maybe they're in hospice or healthcare or something like that. That is a possibility. This is a caretaking alignment, you know, when we have Mercury and Venus. So you're wanting to nurture or take care of someone else, or they might be doing that for you. You see how it works? But Cancer is uh, the family sign, and it represents emotions and, and, and security and a, and a feeling of wanting security and safety. And so in the eighth house, it has to do with psychological safety and well-being. And so this is what it means. Uh, it could also represent, you know, financial matters as well. So this is a, a house that, uh, you know, is more nurturing, but it's also more psychological in nature. The sun enters Cancer as well on the 20th, which marks the spring equinox, excuse me, the summer solstice in the Northern Hemisphere. So here we see the, 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 the sunlight shining in the eighth house. So this is bringing things to light. What's on your subconscious? What are you dealing with? What are other people dealing with? Maybe you're needing to talk to family members who are having a tough time right now. You know, we're all going through this transition. And so with the sun here in the eighth, it's giving you an opportunity to dig deep and figure things out. And so the sun is definitely uh, very beneficial here. If it doesn't have anything to do with that, maybe you're in a, in, a, in a relationship when there's a lot of emotion and feeling for the other person and you both are sharing, uh, you know, tender moments. So that is a possibility here as well. The full moon in Capricorn this month is going to affect the second house of income and values. So bringing something to light, you know, thinking about your sense of purpose, your drive, your determination, all of that is on the table. And so this is, um, you know, uh, anything to do with uh, the physical side of life also, you know, like buying furniture or clothing or, you know, vehicles. But uh, usually a moon in Capricorn has a lot to do with responsibility 
and, and you know, taking care of business and, uh, you know, just organizing and being meticulous. So this could have something to do with your finances or investments that you need to keep an eye on. And last but not least, we have Saturn that goes retrograde in Pisces on the 29th in this fourth house of home, feeling, and foundation. So there it is in stationary position. And for the next four months, this will be sitting here. So you may, might be revisiting the past in some way. Maybe you're going back to an old neighborhood or rekindling a friendship with somebody from the past. Whatever it is, it's more of a slow, uh, emotional, psychological uh, side of things, you know, imagination because it's in Pisces. Nothing too overly concerned about, but, you know, your emotions will be uh, pretty much um, the next four months will be, you know, going back and forth and trying to figure them out. Anyway, there you have it, Sagittarius. Um, stand by for a, a, um, a special offer that I have and uh, have a great month and I will talk to you guys soon. Hi, thank you so much for watching my monthly astrology. I really appreciate your support over the years. Have you ever considered learning astrology? Well, you're in luck because I've created a full online astrology course in my private community. It's a full six module course that takes you from the beginning of astrology, what it all means, the mythologies, the houses, all the way to the more advanced techniques, such as progressions, solar returns, how to, how to read transits, how to make predictions. It's all there in this course here. And I even dive into some of the mysterious stuff, you know, what some of the symbolism is all about. So I think you might want to check it out if you're interested. Along with the course, we have a very tight-knit community here where everyone helps each other out. And so if someone knows a lot about astrology, they help other people with astrology. So it's a community that really gets involved and, you know, really wants to learn and help each other out. But as you can see here, I have a whole lot more on this uh, private community. Uh, I also have the Inner Circle live calls each week. Now, this is something that I do twice a month on YouTube, but here I do them on a weekly basis. And I talk about various topics. You get to ask me questions. We interact and we learn a whole lot more than just astrology. So this could be anything from astrology to what's going on in the world, predictions, politics, whatever it is. We talk about it in the inner circle calls. Of course, I do have videos here that I do not have on YouTube. So you get the, you get uh, those two. And then I've got a private resource vault, which has videos uh, that I suggest watching, books, suggested reading, meditations and more. So if you're interested in learning astrology or want to be part of a great community that's really growing fast, head on over to the link down below and click on the link and join today. All right. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now.